I actually like the Chase Sapphire Prefer. It is a solid car, but its place as the top travel car is overblown in my opinion. And I have a few reasons why. What is good fam? With that out of the way, let's get into the video. So the biggest news I have seen in the past year from Chase was about their ink cards and the welcome bonuses on them, which is great. These points can be moved to transfer partners for better value, which requires cards like the Ink Preferred, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, or of course the Chase Sapphire Preferred. But therein lies my first criticism. The card kind of relies on the bonus hamster wheel. Now, for you to get good value out of the card, you will need a large stash of points. And to get these points, card churning or opening cards for sign-up bonuses is the best method as it gets the largest upside. However, when we consider the average traveler, they probably won't be thinking about transferring these points to anywhere besides Hyatt, which it honestly isn't that bad. But that isn't something that is exclusive to the Sapphire Preferred. Like I said before, the ink preferred which actually um, anthony venture has a video on this very subject or the chase sapphire reserve probably provide better value i'll discuss this more in a little bit but for now just know that the value that is coming from the sapphire preferred is not really anything inherent or inherently special about this card uh by itself so Getting 1.5x on your points through the portal is great, but that does not make this card much to write home about, especially given the next few reasons I have coming up. So with that, let's move on to those reasons. So when you look at the Sapphire Preferred's multipliers, you see something pretty peculiar. They're virtually the same multipliers as the Freedom cards. And this brings up the second reason why I think this card is overhyped. The multipliers aren't really anything special at all. Now, let me be clear. <laughs> the Sapphire Preferred does have something over the Freedom cards. And that is that it has the access to transfer partners. But this is not enough, at least in my opinion, as I mentioned before that the Ink Preferred and the Chase Sapphire Reserve both have this option. Now, the usual argument against either of these cards is that one, the Sapphire Reserve has a higher barrier to entry as it costs $550 in terms of its annual fee, and the Ink Preferred is a business card that scares a lot of people away. While both of these statements are true, the reality is that they both have better multipliers and add more value for somebody who is trying to travel. So in particular, the reserve has a $300 travel credit that is easier to use than the $45 hotel credit that you get from the Sapphire Preferred. So now the main useful multipliers on the Sapphire Preferred are the 5X you get through the portal on travel and the 3X you get on dining. But with this, if you look at the Freedom cards, the Freedom Flex and the Freedom Unlimited, you will see that you get the exact same multipliers, 5% back and 3% uh, and 3% back, which is basically 5X and 3X because these cards actually earn um, ultimate reward points. Now, if you really want to transfer these points to transfer partners, this is fine. But I would argue that these slots that you are using for the Chase Sapphire Preferred isn't really good past the first year. And you know, as the multipliers and the perks are really lacking in my opinion. But by the way, if you enjoy videos related to points and travel, show subscribe button some love, do not hit it, just click it. So one of the main reasons that people get the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and honestly really the only reason in my opinion, is the ability to transfer out the ultimate reward points. And in particular, most people, because this is a fan favorite, end up transferring these points to Hyatt. This alone is not a negative, but that is where my next big problem comes from. And that is that the build card is actually arguably better than the Chase Sapphire Preferred. But wait, JP, the build doesn't have a sign-up bonus. This is true. This is true. And I cannot argue against getting a card for the sign-up bonus, and I never will. I actually think this moves the needle the, the best. But hear me out. Beyond the first year, which card are you actually choosing? Also, given that the built card has other uh, exclusive 
partners like American Airlines um, and others and having no annual fee, I think this would be the better card of the two. You know, I would actually tout this as more of a keeper card than the Sapphire Preferred any day of the week. Also, it has the same or actually arguably better multipliers depending on the day of the month. Now, I know these thoughts are going to get me flamed in the comments, but come on now. There are other cards out there that you can use to get those transfer partners. I actually talked about them in this video. And, you know, talking to other credit card YouTubers specifically, as people who talk about credit cards with respect to points and travel, it is actually on us to let the public know explicitly that there are these other options besides the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Okay, okay, you know, I am off my soapbox now. I am back down to earth. Yes, the built card can transfer points to Hyatt, but I understand it has one glaring problem, and that is that it doesn't earn the very valuable ultimate rewards or UR points. This is true. But like I said earlier in this video, there is a card that does this and earns them and does it a lot better. Yes, my fourth reason for thinking this card is overhyped or overrated for travel is that the Chase Sapphire Reserve exists and it does the job a lot better. Yes, it has a higher annual fee and no, I would not be talking about the effective annual fee being $250. But what I will say is that if you're going to travel and I use travel very loosely given Chase's uh, the definition of it, you will get value back from the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And on top of that, you will actually get better multipliers when you use them for travel via the travel portal. That being 10X on hotels and on car rentals. Now. People tout the primary CDW or rental car damage waiver, but in my opinion, if you are renting cars enough to even need that, wouldn't it make sense to get a car that actually adds more points when you're renting them? Just asking for a friend. <laughs> you also are getting lounge access pri uh, via priority pass and the uh, Sapphire lounges, though at the moment these uh, Sapphire lounges are sparse, but you do get that. You're also getting TSA pre-check and you're getting the 50% bonus or the 1.5X uh, when you redeem your points for travel through the portal. And oh yeah, on top of that, you get those very valuable transfer partners that you get on the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Look, in the coming years, I see the Chase Sapphire Reserve getting even better. So if you really wanna travel and you know a card and have a card that earns UR points, and if you can get a proof of this card or product change after the first year of the Chase Sapphire Preferred, I would say the reserve is a better long-term option for a majority of people. Now, let's say we don't want to break the bank for the Sapphire Reserve. I get it. Well, I will argue that there's another program altogether that might even have a better trifecta for the money if you are asking me. And this brings me to my next reason, and that is that the C trifecta might actually be better. Did I lose you? Okay, hear me out. The City Trifecta has a $95 annual fee card that has better multipliers or at least more usable multipliers, in my opinion, in the City Premier. You also kind of get a similar hotel credit, but getting $100 back after spending $500 through the portal. Yes, 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 it sucks. I get it. But how often are you actually using the Chase Hotel credit anyway? I mean, my player too has a card and she doesn't even know that it actually exists. You know. It also, this trifecta also has the custom cash and, you know, which in my opinion is on par with the Freedom Flex as it still gets 5% back and it can change from month to month instead of having to do it for this for three months at a time or a quarter at a time and not even knowing what the categories are beforehand. And finally, we have the double cash, which gets you 2% back, which is basically better overall then the 1.5 x you're getting back on the freedom unlimited need i say any more about that and oh yeah the both of these cards earn thank you points when you transfer them to the premiere so now that 5x we get on the custom cash and that 2x we get on uh, sorry that five percent we got the custom cash is now 5x and the two percent we get on the double cash is now 2x now somebody might tell me it doesn't have travel insurance. It doesn't have travel insurance. Okay, fine. It doesn't have travel insurance. But to get those insurances, I do believe you have to book travel with the car and not through transfer parts. I could be wrong, but I do believe that.
And from what I have seen with the Sapphire Preferred, you're basically just mainly transferring those points and not really booking travel necessarily. So though some people might actually do it. But if you know that is something that you really want, you can just buy travel insurance, my dude. It does exist. But no matter if you agree or disagree, share this video with your friend and ask them what they think. And of course, guys, until next time, peace.